Good morning, Church, and welcome to Bethany Evangelical Free Church. This is the online worship service for the 5th of July, 2020. My name is Kinman, and I'm your worship leader for today. If you need to refer to the bulletin, um, you should have received it as an attachment in an email. If not, you can scan the QR code here. This will bring you to the bulletin on our webpage, and you can refer to the order of worship as well as announcements. In addition, if you are joining us for the first time, we would like to get to know you more. So please uh, scan this QR code that will bring you to a link and leave your details there and someone will get in touch with you after this service. Now let us uh, prepare for the worship service. Shall we pray together? Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we can come together to, as one church to worship you. And we want to praise you and worship you this morning because all glory and honour is due to your name. Please forgive us for the sins that we have committed against you and, for, and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. We want to remember Jesus and his saving love shown for us by his death on the cross. The grace and the love poured out for us. We want to give thanks to you, sing your praises this morning, and to listen to your word. And we want to give of our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, the call to worship is from Psalms 30, verse 5. And it says, Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favour is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. These few verses remind us that we can sing praise and give God the glory in whatever circumstance, whether we are feeling sad and weeping, or if we are joyful, we can always give glory to God because of the love that he has shown to us. So let us come together to sing this first hymn, Come People of the Risen King. Let us join together wherever we are to give praises to him. Sure, we hear them fall. The truth that Christ. 
Christ through every age, our God is all in all. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Truly, we can rejoice because God loves us. And this verse from Romans 8 reminds us of God's love. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Truly, our joy is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and in everything we can trust in Him and find our being in Him. And this next song reminds us of, of this, in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, come through the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, what fears are still and striving seeds. Jesus has done on the cross of us as we prepare for the Holy Communion. Let us sing this last song, All I Have is Christ. I once was lost in darkest night, yet 
Lord, I knew the way, the sin that brought his joy and mine, and led me to the grave. I had no hope that you would own a rebel to our will, and if you had not loved me first, I would refuse you still. But as I read my help on this, indifferent to the cause, you look upon my helpless name and led me to the cross. And I beheld God's love display. Suffered in my case, you bore the wrath reserved for me. Now all I know is grace. Hallelujah! All I have is Christ. Hallelujah! is my life. Now, Lord, I will be yours alone and live so all might see the strength to fall through your commands will never come from me. Oh, Father, use my ransom life in any way Let my song forever be, for I only boast is you. Hallelujah, all I have is Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus is my life. Hallelujah. All I have is Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is my Lord. Yes, truly, Lord. All we have is you. You are our all in all. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Shalom. Peace be with you. I'm so excited to be your pastor. And I thank you for allowing me to enter into your life and into the life of the church. There are many things that the Lord wants to do in Bethany. And my prayer is that we will be sensitive to His still small voice speaking to us. That we will not walk ahead of God, but we will always depend on Him. My prayer is that I will be able to get to know you better, not only just to know you, but also to journey together with you, to see God's faithfulness in your life and to see His goodness and His grace in your life. We serve a living God and we love Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will collectively together join our hearts to worship Him in spirit and in truth at Bethany. There is a verse that keeps coming to me over the last few months as I'm preparing to come into this office. The verse is taken from John chapter 10, verse 27. John 10, 27 tells us, as Jesus was telling his disciples this, My sheep hears my voice. I know them and they follow me. My prayer is that as I hear the great shepherd's voice, I will pray that you will also hear my voice as I hear his voice. 
and I will get to know you just as I pray that Jesus will know me and he does and we will together follow after his voice. I'm excited, like I said, to get to know you better, to allow me to enter into your life and allow me to love you as Christ loved his church. So over the next few months, you'll be getting calls from me and perhaps even a surprise visit and certainly lots of text messages. But I want to assure you of this, that in spite of this pandemic, this unprecedented time, that God is still sovereign, that He is still in control, and He loves us very, very much. And I want you to know that the church, together with the board, is really trying our best to mitigate against these issues that is brought up by the pandemic. And I pray for your understanding and your patience as we navigate through these uncertain times. But knowing that God's word is certain, His ways are unchanging. So I'm ex excited. I'm excited to come on board. And I thank you for allowing me to be part of this family. Together with my wife, Wendy, we look forward to spending time with you. Scripture reading is also part of our worship and today's scripture reading is from the Psalms, Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of God. Now let us uh, worship God with our offerings and following which we will sing the doxology. Bringing an offering is a part of our worship and you can do so in two ways. You can send a direct bank transfer. You can refer to the focus, the bulletin for our church bank account details. Or you can also use this QR code which is on this slide Please open your mobile banking apps and you can scan the code and this will uh, bring you to a page which will allow you to make and transfer. So we'll just uh, spend a few minutes right now to allow you to do so. voices together to sing of the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him 
Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we can give a small portion, Lord, of all they've given to us back to you. And we ask, Lord, that you use the offerings and the tithes for the extension of your kingdom, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'd like to hand the time over to Pastor Desmond for the Holy Communion and the Sermon. As we come to the Lord's table, may I remind all of us that this is a holy event. We need to have the right posture even before we partake of this element. May I help all of us to remember the sacrifices that Jesus has done on Calvary. You see, on the night before he was being betrayed, Jesus was having supper with his disciples. This was the night before the Passover. And Jesus said to his disciples, as he took the bread on his hands, and he said this, This is my body, which is for you. Take it in remembrance of me. Jesus' body, which was broken for you and I, He reminded us that our bodies will not be broken as we partake of this meal together when we trust in His complete work on the cross. Would you join with me together to remember Him and His sacrifice? And in the same way, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he said that this cup is the new covenant made in my blood. Drink of it in remembrance of me. Jesus' blood was shed on Calvary. His sacrifice was for you and I. So as we drink of this cup, we remember of His blood that was shed for your sins and my sins. Let's do that together right now. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you to thank you, Father God, that we are not people without hope. We thank you that we can come together in this way, even though we may not be physically together. Yet, Lord, you've allowed this act of sacrifice, remembering Jesus' sacrifice, to join our hearts together, to remember what he has done, as his body was broken for us and as his blood was poured out as a living sacrifice for us. Help us, Father God, to live our lives worthy of this sacrifice. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning. I hope all of you are staying well and healthy and safe. This is my first sermon as your pastor, and I'm delighted to meet all of you, even though I really wish I could meet you personally. But I know that many of you have been praying for me and Wendy. I just want to thank you for welcoming us and making us feel at home. I look forward to 
growing in the knowledge and in the love of Christ together with you. As we consider the ways of the Lord, and as we meditate on His Word, and as we fellowship with one another, I pray that Bethany EFC will grow not only just in the knowledge about God, but also grow in our love for God. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Verse 3. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruits in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Today, we are beginning a series on the book of Psalms. The Psalter is really a collection of songs sung by the people of Israel. And this collection was done during the exile and just when they are about to re-enter back to the promised land after the period of exile. Psalm 1 and 2 begins the entire Psalter, the 150 Psalms, and reminds the people as they enter back into the promised land, as they rebuild the temple that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC, they are reminded that God is in the midst of all of them. And this reminds them that they must meditate on God's word and they have a choice to choose between God or the other gods that are in the land, the idols, choices. We all have to make many choices each day. We are right now in election time, the time where we have to make important choices as to who to govern Singapore for the next five years. As I look around me and as I go around, I realize that there are many posters and many parties that I can choose. For some of us, we will have very easy choices. But in some wards, in some constituencies, this choice may not be so easy. And as I was thinking about what kind of choices that I have to make come July the 10th, I can't help but think about the future because the choices that I make will affect the future of my family and my country. And this is where my patriotic feelings resurfaced. We, the citizens of Singapore, pledge ourselves as one united people, regardless of race, language or religion, to build a democratic society based on justice and equality, so as to achieve happiness, prosperity and progress for our nation. Now there is one particular word that caught my attention so as to achieve happiness. Happiness is something that we pursue. Many people spend a lot of time to pursue happiness. And happiness is a matter of choice. The decisions that we make will affect our future, our pathways. And today, as we consider about the choices that we make, I can't help but think about those choices affecting my future 
and my happiness. Someone begins also with the word happy. In fact, the word blessed is the same as the word happy. So therefore, it begins by saying, blessed or happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. And someone appropriately begins by telling the people, blessed is the man. I want us to see that there are really two groups of people. There are two groups of people and there's a comparison between these two groups of people. And I also want us to see that there are two pathways that you and I must choose. And as a result of choosing those two different pathways, we will face a consequence. Not only is there a comparison, but now there's a consequence. And the psalm will end off with a conclusion. The conclusion of the two people, the two paths, and the two possibilities presented for you and I. The psalm begins with a comparison of two kinds of people. The first kind of people are the people who hate the Lord. And the second group of people are those who love the Lord. Those who hate the Lord are called different names. They're called the wicked or the ungodly. They're called sinners or troublemakers. And they're called mockers or blamers. In verse 1, in fact, there is an imagery about them. That imagery is found in verse 4. That imagery is that of chaff. Chaff are like worthless things. They're impermanent. They are useless. And there's really nothing much you can do. In fact, they occupy so much space. Around our church, there's lately a lot of dry leaves. And what can you do with all these dry leaves? Like chaff. What can you do with it? They're useless. And in fact, the wind easily blows them away. The second kind of people are the people who are blessed by God. This group of people are the people who love the Lord. They are not only just blessed by God as found in verse 1, but they are also given an imagery, an imagery of a fruitful tree whose leaves do not wither and its roots go deep into the ground to draw nourishment. They are also called prosperous and successful in verse 3. In whatever they do, they are prosperous. They have abundance. They have much, more than enough. And they are successful in the eyes of the Lord. A tree gets its nourishment from its roots as well as from the sun. And in today's psalm, we know that if we follow after God's ways, if we dig our roots deep into God's word, we will be like a tree planted by streams of living water that will bear much fruit in due season. How fruitful we are, depends on how deep our roots are. And just like this tree, this mango tree that bears much fruit in its season, it is important for you and I to continue to have our roots deep into the Word of God, the law of the Lord, the Torah, so that in due season, our leaves will not wither and we will bear much fruit visible fruit that will be a benefit for many people. The question for you and I here today is this. Are our roots deep, deep into the Word of God? 
where do we find our nourishment from? Is it from God's word? From listening and reading his word? Listening to scripture as well as for sermons? Or our roots perhaps planted somewhere else that fails to give us the necessary nourishment that we need? Compared to the tree, the chaff are not like so. The wicked are not like so. Nothing that they have last forever and the choice for you and i is clear do we choose god's ways to meditate on his laws or do we choose the way of the wicked and in fact our result is the wind will blow everything away the psalmist reminds the people that there are two groups of people and that's where the comparison is. But the psalmist also tells the people of God that there is a consequence, a consequence as a result of being in each type or each category of people. And the consequences is a result of our choice of walking in a certain pathway. And the psalmist presents to us two different paths. The path of the wicked, the sinners, the scoffers, or the path of the righteous, the blessed man, the fruitful man. These people are not only just failing in their lives, they are useless, they are also indicted. That means they cannot be in the assembly of the righteous. And finally, there are people who will be ashamed because these people, the way of the wicked, verse 6b tells us, will perish. They will end up being punished by God one day, someday. So that is the failed life. But the psalmist didn't just paint for us a negative picture. The psalmist also gives us a positive picture. Throughout this entire psalm, you realize that there are positives and that there are negatives. And in this case, the psalmist reminds us that there is also another pathway that we can choose. The pathway of a fruitful life as compared to a failed life. As the Lord watches over his ways, he will be rescued. The, the idea of God watching is the idea of God protecting him. So the psalmist presents to us two pathways, two paths, the failed life or the fruitful life. And indirectly calling the people of God to make a choice. Do you want to be fruitful? Or do you want to fail in life? Do you want to be blessed? Or do you want to be ashamed when judgment comes? At this juncture, I would like to share with us what the psalmist has introduced in this psalm. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, how do we fall? How do we fail in life? Nobody wants to be the wicked, the scoffers, the sinners. Nobody wants to choose a pathway that leads to destruction, right? But yet, we need to understand that the psalmist is suggesting to us, you and I fail not because we choose to fail, but because we fall into bad company. Notice in verse 1 that there is a pathway. He walks, then he stands, then he finally sits. So this, this person did not fail because he chose to fail, but because he made choices along the way. First, he was still walking and he begins to make certain decisions with the ungodly as he journeyed on in life. And finally, the ungodly, the wicked, got his attention, so he begins to stand 
in their presence. And he begins to partner with these troublemakers. And after a while, he grew so immune to unholiness, immune to even the ways of the Lord, that he forgotten that these people are leading him on a pathway of destruction. So as he walks, he begins to stand, and after a while, he gets so comfortable that he begins to sit. The idea of sitting is the idea of having fellowship, of intimacy with someone. And so he begins to identify himself with the cynical people, the scoffers, those who blame everything except to reflect on themselves, where they've gone wrong. And so the psalmist reminds us that we do not fail because we choose to fail, but we fail because we fall into bad company. We fail and we fall not because we are careless. We fall because we are in bad company. What should we do then? How should you and I live our lives? There is a defensive response and then there is an offensive response. The defensive response is the man who is aware of the dangers around him. The defensive response is the man who knows who are the wicked, who are the sinners, and who are the scoffers. And he chooses not their paths. He chooses not to fraternize, to befriend them. And he keeps them at an arm's length. My suggestion to you is this. Look around you. Are you able to identify the wicked, the sinners, and the mockers amongst you in your circle of people that you work with? May I suggest to you, don't just simply say, that, oh, that guy is evil, that guy is bad. He's not a follower of God. And I avoid them. My suggestion to you is to go the extra mile, and that is to pray for these people. Would you consider praying for them? And also guarding yourself against having too close a relationship with them and in their own ways. The second thing, the second suggestion I have for you is to avoid the activities at all costs. In fact, Paul tells his disciple, his child, Timothy, he says, flee from temptation in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. We need to avoid them at all costs. Whatever that they're doing may be very tempting for you and I. And we need to be aware and to flee from these people. The third suggestion I have for you is do not be alone. Do not be alone because that is where you will be tempted when nobody is looking, when you're surfing the net, when you're in a hotel room on a business trip. Be careful. Make sure that you have accountability partners. Make sure that your wife, your spouse knows exactly where you are and can call you at any one time. Be sure that you are never alone in dealing with temptations. Now that is a defensive response. What about the offensive response? What are some of the proactive things that you and I could do in order for us to not walk in the way of the wicked nor sinners? Well, the offensive response is found in verse 2. Notice here that the psalmist says, His delight is in the law of the Lord. And on His law, He meditates day and night. My suggestion to you is this. Meditate on God's Word day and night. Think about God's Word. Pray through God's Word. 
Join a small group to study God's word. Fill your surrounding with Christian music, for example, if you can. Memorize scripture. That is something that you can do, an offensive response to a world that is steeped with carnality and temptation. The second suggestion I have for you is to make regular time to worship God daily. Don't just wait for Sunday. And yes, I do know right now we are in unprecedented times and it's hard for us to worship together. And so right now we are at home worshiping, watching this sermon live via YouTube or streamed. But may I suggest to you that our worship should not only just be on Sunday, but it should be every day. Would you consider waking up just a little bit earlier each morning to listen to God's word, to play a Christian song, and just to sing to the Lord, to start your day right? That's my second suggestion. Make regular time to worship God daily and together with your family. The third suggestion I have for you is to know and believe that you are worthy and loved by God. Notice very carefully in verse 6 what it says. Let me read for you verse 6. Verse 6 says this, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. The Lord watches. He guards. He guides, he protects, he is like the God who looks down from his holy throne and he knows you by name. That means he cares for you. He knows your needs. I want you to know that even knowing that God watches over us is so comforting. In the midst of your temptation, you will be able to fight against temptation when you know that you are beloved by God, that you are watched over by Him, that His presence is around you. He watches over you like a shepherd watches over his flocks. And I do not know about you, but for me, I find that both frightening and liberating as well. Frightening because he knows exactly what I'm doing and thinking even. Even before I could do anything, he already knows what I'm about to do. And nothing escapes his watch. That to me is frightening, <laughs> it's scary. But yet it's also liberating because I know that he doesn't just Lord over me, superintends my life, I also know that He watches over me in order to protect me. Just like a father who protects his child when he knows that the child is going to do something that is quite silly or stupid. And so God loves us. He cares for us. He wants to nurture us, to protect us, to love us. And so I find that liberating. Liberating to know that He watches over me. He has my back. He covers me. We started off with a comparison and then we see a consequence. Now we're coming to a conclusion. Two kinds of people, two pathways, and now two possibilities. That means you and I will have to make a choice. A choice that we either go God's way or we go man's way. And the conclusion, the terminal point, the end game will be very different. You and I will have to make the choice to choose between God's way or between man's way. For the people of Israel, as they come back to the, from the exile, as they rebuild their nation and the temple, they know that they have to make a choice. 
And the psalm begins the entire Psalter by reminding them to make a choice. The choice of a blessed man will lead to a pathway of blessedness, of life, of fruitfulness. The choice of following after worthless gods of the land, following after their own strength and power and might, is a choice of destruction, a pathway of destruction. It's a failed life. The question I have for you as I began this sermon was this, which way would you want to choose? And I did say that many of us will want to choose the way of life, of prosperity, of, of blessedness. None of us will ever want to consciously choose the way of the wicked. But I also presented to us that we do not fail because we deliberately choose to fail. We fail because we are in bad company. I have good news for you. The good news is this, for you and I here today, unlike the people of Israel, whereas they can only look forward to a savior, a king, someone who can lead them into that pathway of righteousness as they begin to rebuild the temple. And in fact, this was really found in Psalm 2. This sermon, if I have a choice, I would have put Psalm 1 and 2 together as one sermon. But I will end this series over the next three months at the end of this entire series and I will finish off with Psalm 2. You see, the people of Israel were looking forward to a Savior and Psalm 2 talks about this Messiah, this King that will come to usher in an era of blessedness. But for you and I, we have a Savior. A Savior who also walked the pathway of righteousness. In fact, His ways are blameless. His ways are perfect. And He calls you and I to walk alongside with Him. He wants to guard us and watch over us like a shepherd. And he says, my sheep, hears my voice. I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. This same shepherd, this same king, this same Messiah chose not to walk in the way of the wicked, nor the sinners, nor the scoffers. This saviour, his life was ended by the sinners, the scoffers, the wicked. This Savior, this Messiah is Jesus Christ. As we have taken the Lord's Supper and as we remember His body broken for us, His blood was poured out as a propitiation for our sins. We remember Jesus as our Messiah as our Lord, the only man who could perfectly walk in God's ways, in the pathway of righteousness. So that now we have an example. So now we can imitate Him by walking in His ways, by walking in His statutes and in His laws. And as we meditate on His life, His death, and His resurrection on the third day, we too will be like Jesus. We too will be blessed as a result of His sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. This psalm, Psalm 1, is a psalm of contrast. Throughout this psalm, you will see the positive and the negative. You will see light and darkness. You will see fruitfulness and barrenness. You will see people being rewarded and people being judged and condemned. And in many ways, we are also given this contrast and a choice to choose between righteousness and the pathway of life or wickedness 
and the pathway of destruction. The choice is yours. Thank you, Pastor Desmond, for the sermon. And now let us sing our response song, The Perfect Wisdom of Our God, which is a new song by the Catholics and Suat Townsend. Um, and this song reminds us, as we study the Psalms and as we are reminded about the way of the righteous man, that God's perfect wisdom is found in His Word. Please uh, read through the next few slides for the announcements. Shall we receive the blessings from the Lord? Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, be glory, dominion, power, and authority both now and forevermore. Amen. Come to the end of the service. 
um, please do join us for the EAT session at 11 o'clock and you can join us using the Zoom details which is given um, on a separate email. Thank you for um, joining us for this online service and we hope to see you next week. Take care and God bless.